Steam has a discoverability problem. This isn't new. Steam has had a discoverability problem for a long, long time now, but recently it feels like even Steam's own attempts to fix this problem are falling quite short. Yesterday Valve released Steam Labs, a brand new initiative that they believe will go somewhere to tackle the issues with discovering things on their storefront. In all fairness, it's probably the best attempt the company has made at making their storefront more usable since they first introduced the Steam Curators program five years ago. So what exactly is the problem here? Well, in January 2019, Steam had 30,000 DMs available for sale. Now that's full DMs, not DLC, not add-ons, not software. That's 30,000 complete DMs available for users to buy. Half of those DMs, that's 15,000 of those 30,000 DMs, have been added to the storefront since 2017. That is an astounding amount of DMs to be added in two years, especially when you consider that Steam has been available for users since 2003. This is primarily the result of Steam's disastrous attempts at automating its process of approving DMs that can be sold on the store. First there was Steam Greenlight around five years ago, where users could vote on DMs that they thought deserved a place on Valve's storefront, and more recently there is Steam Direct, a absolute trash fire of a system where developers can just pay a flat fee and have their garbage DM listed directly onto Steam. This is a pretty good example of Valve's worth shy approach to how they curate their storefront in that they don't, and they desperately try to find quick and easy ways of getting other people or automated systems to do it for them. The less hands-on Valve have to be on their incredibly popular storefront, the happier they are. And that is kind of where this issue stems from. Out of those 30,000 DMs available on Steam, there's a lot of them that are terrible. Asset flips, executables that don't even boot, unsupported early access DMs. Steam is flooded with rubbish, which is to be expected from a storefront that in all fairness, has always been on the bleeding edge of PC gaming. Without Steam, we wouldn't have things like Early Access, a controversial system, but one that has resulted in some of the best games of the past decade. Steam is responsible for being the distributor of some of the indie scene's most successful games. Games like Stardew Valley that found instant success because of the easy and natural way that games then flourish on the biggest digital storefront on PC. So it's to be expected that a storefront that allows the sale of everything, good or piss, would have a fair amount of rough around the diamonds. The issue, and one that Valve have been criticised for for a long time, is that finding those diamonds is incredibly hard. With 30,000 games available, and hundreds being added sometimes every week, it is a near impossible task for Valve to create automated algorithms and systems that can present players with games that are relevant to them and their interests. So many great indie games are lost amongst the chaff that clods up Steam, that unless you have a roth solid marketing campaign going on outside of the system, it can be very, very hard to be noticed. Valve have tried to fix this multiple times. They have things like the recommendation queue, which will attempt to present to you games that they think you will like based on other games in your library. They have the curator system, in which people you trust can be subscribed to, and there you will find a list of games that they deem worthy of your time and money. They have interactive lists on their homepage. They have areas dedicated to displaying games that are new or trending and things like that. They have their now infamous sales, which occur regularly and quite often attempt to highlight smaller, more unique titles for a reduced price in the hope that you'll pick them up and enjoy them. They even recently introduced better developer pages, so you can find games by developers and publishers that you have a fondness for. Publishers like Devolver Digital, who are very active on Steam and list most of their games on the platform. Despite all this, discoverability on Steam is still an issue. With so many games being put on the platform, it's still really hard to just find something that you want to play on there. In fact, all of these new features that Valve keep shoving into the already bloated client just makes it messier and more difficult to comprehend. Just this wall of information that's just overwhelming, to be completely honest with you. The Epic Store definitely has its fair share of problems, but there is something about its clean interface and game-led design that does made it a little bit more of a pleasure to browse than Valve's information-dense homepage. But to be honest, pretty much every major storefront that sells video games has this problem. Even the Nintendo Switch eShop, which at first was a bastion for clean design and easy discoverability, has become bloated and clodded full of the same kind of crap games that made Steam such a chore to browse. Even more curated storefronts, like the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store, are still just so full of stuff that it puts me off browsing, to be completely honest. And so, Steam have revealed Steam Labs, 
their most recent attempt at trying to solve this discoverability issue that has been a problem for the company for a long, long time now. Steam Labs has three new features. The first is Micro Trailers, a sit set and trailer for every game that gives you a overview of everything the game offers. It's an official implementation of a great Twitter account called Steam Trailers in Sit Settings. I believe Valve actually approached the Twitter account and asked them for help in implementing this feature, and I'm glad because that Twitter account is very, very good at giving you a very basic overview of what a game is. By hovering over the thumbnails, you get to see a little bit of what the gameplay looks like, you get to understand its tall themes, its atmosphere, and what kind of genre it is. And this is great, it's a long overdue feature that just gives you that little bit more context about what you're looking at. Also, as a UI designer, it is really funny to me as to how much porn websites that have been doing this kind of preview for a long time now are often leading the charge when it comes to user experience. I honestly hats off to the team behind Pornhub because they've introduced a lot of features on that website that have permeated throughout the industry to the benefit of all of their users. At least, so I hear. I wouldn't know. I've been told by, by friends of the amazing things they're doing over there, but I wouldn't know from first-hand experience. Next up is the Interactive Recommender, which is effectively a more complex version of their recommendation engine. Steam will look at your entire library, work out what kind of games you like, and then provide you with a long, long list of games it thinks you might be interested in. Interestingly, you can tweet this a little bit, by asking Steam to return titles that are more popular or more niche or older or newer. I quite like this. I still think it's a lot of information to be presented with and I don't think it's a great solution to the problem, but it is nice to see that Valve are trying their best to highlight games that are both popular and niche and older and new. And I think that's good. That's fair enough. I, I don't think they'll use this very often, but the more options, I suppose, the better. The final new feature and the catalyst for me making this video is the automatic show. The automatic show is a 25 minute video automatically generated by an algorithm that presents the user with a deluge of 10 second previews of games available on Steam. For some reason, this automatic show doesn't show the entire trailer. It doesn't just show one section from the trailer. It shows four different bits from the trailer with the back background music from the first section playing, which means that you get this awful compilation of one trailer occurring at the same time for about 10 seconds. It's split into lots of different categories, and like I say, this goes on for 25 minutes. It's awful, and I've no idea why they've decided that this is the right answer. The reason why this one experiment has driven me to create this video is because for a long, long time, I have genuinely believed that a great way to improve their discoverability issue is to create tightly produced videos about content that is now available to buy on Steam. My belief is that what Valve need to do is to hire a group of incredibly talented video producers and hosts and just passionate people who love PC games to create this content. I am not surprised that Valve, in this instance, are trying to achieve this through automation and machine learning, which, if this automated show has proven anything, is that it does not work. This mess of a video is insulting to the senses. To look at this much visual noise does not give you a good impression of the game that you're trying to learn about. It's like Valve looked at the Sit, Set and Trailer Twitter account, which gives you a very brief overview of a game, and thought, what if we ran four of them simultaneously next to one another for each game for 25 minutes? This is a perfect way of informing our users about the great new content that's available on Steam. No. No, it's it's really not. Further down on the page for the automatic show, Valve have given a little bit of a behind the scenes sneak peek at a new version of this show that they're already working on, one that has a voiceover script. Now I know what you're thinking, hey a voiceover! That means that somebody is reading from a script and oh no, that's automated as well. What's new on Steam for May 15th, 2024? Let's start with our top three featured games. First up is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is a battle royale shooter that pits 100 players against each other in a struggle for survival. They're using a text to speech bot, a text to speech bot to speak over the video that is already automated. What's Valve's reason for not using this yet? They think it's too stilted. What's their plan? They're going to improve it. They're not going to build a team. They're going to just keep improving their bots. And for this reason, I despair. Dear viewer, I despair a lot. Back in 2009, I owned an Xbox 360, like I'm sure many of us did during that console generation. What was great about the Xbox 360 here in the UK is that we got access to something called Inside Xbox. 
Inside Etzbot was a video series produced by a group of people who would create videos for the Etzbot dashboard. This meant that on the store tab, you were able to watch videos by media personalities who would create interesting content about games that were now available on the Etzbot 360 or were upcoming in the near future. They had multiple shows, such as Sent You a Message, in which Andy Farrant and Dan Meir would answer questions sent into them via the Etzbot itself. It was entertaining, they had a laugh, they made cheesy British jokes, but most importantly, they informed the user, giving opinionated commentary about video games that were now available. I was obsessed with Inside Etzbot back in the day. I loved just how charming and informative it was. And since then, I genuinely think that Inside Xbox has been the gold standard for this kind of corporate commissioned content. It was fun. It was easy, it was breezy, it was cheesy. What am I saying? Inside Etzbots was cancelled, although it still lives on in the quite excellent Outside Etzbots YouTube channel, but I still think that every single major company misses a trick with this. PlayStation has something slightly similar with PlayStation Access, but nothing has ever really came close to what Inside Etzbots set out to achieve. Nowadays, in a world where YouTube dominates, I discover most of my games from other YouTube channels. Things like Errant Signal, Writing on Dames, and Heavy Eyed. YouTube channels that bastion this small smaller dames, dames that are niche and overlooked. I also visit websites like Rot Paper Shotgun every single day, a PC dedicated website that highlights some wonderful, strange and incredible dames you would never normally hear about. And when I look at Steam's automatic show, I just think to myself, why don't you hire a team to do this for you? Why don't Steam hire a team of people whose entire job is to create content for their users in order to highlight their greatest dames that are available to play right Right now. Imagine if Steam had a portion of the website that had two or three videos a week that included things like developer interviews, that included lists of relaxing dames to play on your weekend, or summer dames to play when it's too hot to go outside, a weekly curated list of the best dames that have appeared on Steam, with back and forth conversation about the benefits of playing them. Out of all places, the App Store, a storefront in a very similar position to that of Steam, in that it contains a metric foot ton of unwanted piss, recently introduced this concept of daily articles. The first thing you see when you boot up the App Store isn't just an overwhelming list of items, instead it's individual articles, curated writing about what's available, highlighting an individual app or a collection of apps or a developer. And this kind of stuff is great. I found loads of really interesting things because that content isn't overwhelming. It doesn't put me off because of how busy it is. It's just a really nice, clean user interface that's inviting and informative and interesting and relatable. And that's what Steam needs. You can't just keep throwing all of these systems at a mess and expect it to clean itself up. You just can't do that, Valve. You can't just keep programming a bot to try and fix all of your problems. Steam is the biggest digital storefront on PC. It has been for nearly a decade now. And despite it actually having decent competition in the form of the Epic Game Store now, Steam is still the de facto place for gamers to go and buy PC games. The amount of money Valve are making is beyond comprehension. So why can't they just invest in their own teams? Why can't they bring people in to curate and create content for them that will benefit everyone else? I understand there might be some issues around putting faces onto their storefronts. Maybe Valve don't want to have representatives for their business being put in the firing line. I do get that, but you can still write articles. You can still create the faceless but engaging content that the App Store currently does. Apple have managed to solve this problem, and Apple are pretty good at just creating more problems normally. The fact that they've solved a lot of the issues that the App Store had is pretty incredible, really. I mean, the App Store is still a mess. It's still incredibly hard to become discovered on there, but they've tried, and I think that goes a long way. And for Steam, I just think it's such an easy option. When I watch these YouTube videos like Errant Signal, who does such a great job of highlighting the overlooked and the niche, I just think Valve could be doing this. I don't want to watch whatever this is. I want to watch people talk about the games that they think I should be playing. I don't want a machine to tell me what it thinks I would like, because at the moment it's just telling me I want exactly the same as what I already have in a lot of ways. Oh, more sequels to games I already own. Brilliant, thanks. No, I want to see the niche stuff. I want to see stuff I would never consider playing. I want you to talk about it and convince me that it's worth buying, because I'm a consumer and capitalism is all I care about, clearly. Anyway, I just think that 
Valve have an option here that doesn't involve investing in more machine learning. I think you just need to hire talented people to come into your business and create content for you. I don't think that's that hard. In fact, I think that's probably an easier solution than trying to build an algorithm that outputs a 25 minute long compilation of trailers. Why did they think this was fine? So yeah, Steam Labs is an appreciated step in the right direction, but I still think they're missing the most obvious solution to their problems. Steam has a discoverability issue, one that can be solved easily by hiring humans instead of developing algorithms. Anyway, that's my little rant about Steam and its discoverability issues. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, subscribe, and also why not leave a comment? I'd love to know what your thoughts about this are. Do you like Steam Labs? Do you think Steam needs to do more in a completely different way? Uh, what, what's, your, what's your ideas? Give me your ideas. I want to hear them. As a user experience designer by trade, I find Steam to be a fascinating case study of an incredibly complicated problem that I don't really have a solution for. So please tell me what you think the solution is. Anyway, that's it. That's me done. I need to try and edit down this unscripted rant into a video that won't bore everyone to tears. Thanks and bye.